We're back in the Stone Creek Kitchen with Josh Herbert, or Hebert, rather, from Posh Restaurant, and um, student Matt, Matthew Lovegrove. And we are really enjoying what's going on today because we've already made, it's a funny name, you're going to have to say it for me. Shawan Mushi. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's more than funny, it's just difficult. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's like the other Japanese specialty, okonomiyaki, don't even try it. And I will not, and I will not. And now we're going to make something that you said has some potatoes, not to be confused with tomatoes, Correct. Um, some carrots, and a lot of other ingredients. Yeah, we're going to stick our, with our th farm to table theme, and we're going to do a little potato wrapped sea bass. We're okay. not going to use Chilean sea bass because it's pretty much been fished out of the ocean. Oh. So we don't want to do that, but we want to take thin slices of potato here. We've got a nice Idaho 100, a very large baker potato there. And we're just going to lay out a couple of sheets of, of, of fresh, very thinly wrapped potato. You can also Take a little twist and do the Japanese Okinawan purple potatoes. They're not quite as starchy, so they'll change the nature of the dish just a little bit. In but what they're way? Still fun Te for texturally or with flavor? Correct. They, they're, it's a little harder to get crispy gotcha. because they have a little less starch, but we can still do almost the same thing. But we're going to take here a piece of sea bass, and we're going to give it a little salt on both sides, and then we're going to set it in the middle of this little potato jobby do, and we're just going to wrap it, fold it over. I like that technical, you know, jobby -doo. Cu culinary term, the jobby do. Absolutely. The jobby do is very important in almost every career, not just culinary. <laughs> so we've got this nice little potato. If you want to set it for about 10 minutes, sometimes that will help it set a little bit better. But we're going to cook it right away so it doesn't turn brown. And we're going to start, I'm going to have Maddie sear this up because he's an expert at searing. He works at the fish station at Posh. So we're going to start with a little butter and then go ahead and give me a little light sear. What are we going to do? We're going to Spread the butter out in our pan, right? You can use oil, but butter actually makes the potatoes a little more golden brown. You'll get a slightly better color oh, and more crispness. So okay. we're gonna drop that into our pan with a little bit more salt. And we've got a little uh, seasoning mix that we're using here. It's a little dried parsley, dried oregano. It's kind of something that adds a little extra color and nice little Is this little a little rosemary flavor. over here? Is that going in? Uh, fresh thyme. We're gonna oh. do that to uh, help base the fish with, absolutely. So as we sit and let our fish get golden brown, we might want to turn the heat up on that just a hair. I want to ask Matt real quick. Um, w when you went into this program, from where you were two years ago to where you are now as you're about to graduate, what has been the most challenging part of this curriculum and this program? Um, time, probably. And what do you mean by that? Trying to be able to fit in doing high school, doing work, doing all that. But once you manage it and you get it going, it's actually really fun. And so those life lessons that, that you teach them about that time management, how, how do they apply once you actually have a job doing exactly well, what you do? It's a great running theme because in the restaurant business especially, it requires a lot of discipline. And you have a career where you're often working late, where you're offering, offer, often working off hours from the rest of your friends. And so you need to be able to budget your time, especially your time off between your family, your relationships, your job, which you need to, especially at a young age, it's good to dedicate a lot of time to. Sure. And then you know, just being healthy and living a good, healthy lifestyle as well. I think we all know it's important to get a little exercise, to have a little time to yourself. And also, those are kind of concepts and those sort of um, just life lessons as they relate to you know the, the world of culinary correct um, is really what you're teaching over there exactly exactly the, the school teaches kids the work ethic the basic technique um, how to act to get a job interview properly and just act in general in a professional nature mm -hmm. and that's why I hire and work with so many kids from this particular school is because they come to me most of them will spend at least three months washing dishes so they can learn how to do the hardest and most arduous job in the mm -hmm. kitchen mm -hmm. and then when they come out of it they have the humility and the understanding to work with with every ingredient in the kitchen. If you learn how to respect the lowest person on the totem pole, then you're obviously going to treat the rest of your coworkers. No, with I, I wholeheartedly that. agree with that. I absolutely do. I ran teleprompter in, a, in Odessa, Texas. Wow. While I also, when I came back from doing the, the stories that the anchors were going to read. Right. Yeah. See? I had a little conveyor belt and it was broken, so I had a big weight that I had to move. It was high tech. Yeah, <laughs> learning a little bit of everything is good. And the, the kids go to the school, they learn. It's a, it's a full functioning banquet kitchen. They do tons of large things. Matt has done dinners at the school for up to 350 or 400 people in a night with the rest of his students. They're all run by the students. They do service, they do busing. And then one night a month, they have an actual a la carte service. If you want to flip that, I think. So Matt, cool. how do you know that this is ready? What are we doing here? So if the folks at home want to make this? Well, since it's coated in potatoes, you want to just look for a good color. Okay, so that's the golden color we would be looking for on the under si underside of it? Yep. Okay. And what Matt's doing here, you see him spooning a little bit of the cooking liquid over. We're gonna Add some, watch yourself, Stephanie. There, we're going to add some fresh herbs. Death, death by time. Death by time, exactly. Yes. And he's going to let those herbs kind of toast, and then 
It's called foie, but he's basically going to baste the fish wrap in that, and it'll continue to slowly cooking it through. And so this is ultimately where we're going right yeah, here. With this, this is ultimately our finished product here when we, when we get done. We have a nice crispy potato wrapped fish. We're taking our farm to table theme and taking some local carrots and local beets. We've made like a little sake butter sauce with that and garnished it with a little bit of caviar. It looks absolutely fantastic. All right, and all, all right. drummed up by 16, 17, 18 year old kids. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, I was not doing this when I was 16. I'll just say that. I was not doing this. Well, I want to let everybody know that this Mystery Chef Dinner of the East Valley Institute will take place on Thursday, March 8th from 6 to 8. And that's uh, over on West Main Street, Mesa. It's $65 a person. And um, then you guys are going to stick around because a little bit later we're going to finish up this dish with the, the sauce that you talked about. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, I learned Matt. a lot. Right? Yeah, I learned I, I need a mat in my kitchen. Or <laughs> mats are very helpful. Or in the kitchen. Justin Bieber, whichever you prefer. <laughs> as long as they cook, so I'm okay with it. One. <laughs> <laughs> He'll stick with the first one. Yeah.